Welcome to our noon edition of Arirang News. Here are the stories hitting the headlines at this hour. As warned, the South Korean government is holding junior doctors who haven't returned to their posts legally accountable. Police have also placed an overseas travel ban on four executives from the Korean Medical Association. South Korea's overall industrial production went up for the third straight month in January. Retail sales also inched up, indicating how the economy seems to be recovering. The biggest political event of the year in China, dubbed the Two Sessions, kicked off today. The event brings together Beijing's top political elites as well as leaders in the business and art sector. New laws and economic targets will be approved. Despite the government's rounds of persuasion, most junior doctors have refused to return to duty. Officials say they have been left with no choice but to roll out legal repercussions from today. Moon ae starts us off. From Monday, the South Korean government will be suspending licenses of resident doctors who have yet to return to duty. It ordered these resident doctors to return to work last Thursday and informed them that they would be granted leniency should they return to work by Sunday. However, failure to do so would lead to the government being forced to take administrative and judicial procedures, such as medical license suspensions of between three months and a year or official indictments. A meeting of the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasure Headquarters on Monday morning confirmed the government's firm stance. It is unacceptable that doctors are leaving their patients for whatever reason. The government will be carrying out due punitive action under the law to protect people's lives. The latest count by the health ministry's inspection teams on Thursday show that only 565 resident doctors have come back to work despite these warnings, with 8,945 resident doctors across the country still absent from their posts. The ministry will continue inspections today to confirm these numbers and give doctors an opportunity to defend themselves through statements of opinion. According to the law, administrative agencies must notify parties in advance of legal grounds for punitive action and hear out opinions before imposing restrictions on rights and interests. In the meeting, the health minister also announced the opening of emergency rooms to support emergency patients on Monday in four areas of the country. The government further plans to provide financial support for hiring replacement workers and plans to supplement work guidelines. Medical schools across the country have too been ordered to submit their 2025 quota by Monday, with the Ministry of Education maintaining that if universities do not apply for the increase by the deadline, they will be unable to do so at any point later on. Police have also imposed an overseas travel ban on four former or current Korean Medical Association executives as investigations into the walkout continue. Moon hae Arirang News. South Korea's economy seems to be bouncing back thanks to a spurt in its overall industrial production. Data shows the country's industrial output and private spending rose in January. Facility investment, on the other hand, dropped. Our economics correspondent Lee Soo-jin reads through the figures. South Korea's overall industrial production and private spending rose during the first month of the year while investments fell. Data from Statistics Korea on Monday shows that industrial production in January inched up 0.4 percent compared to the previous month. That's the third increase in as many months. The agency attributed the rise mainly to a growth of more than 12 percent in construction production, which recorded an on-month rise for the first time since September last year. Output in the service sector also edged up 0.1 percent thanks to a robust demand for ICT services such as software development. Production in the manufacturing industry, however, saw a drop of 1.4 percent due to a decline in production levels in semiconductors. Chip production in January fell for the first time in three months, but this was mostly due to base effects from chip production posting a large growth in November and December, according to Statistics Korea. The chip sector overall and its exports are all doing well, so the index falling is mostly being seen as being due to base effects from it being so high in November and December last year. The index for January also was not very low, further indicating that this is due to base effects. Retail sales, a barometer for private spending and consumer demand, saw a rise of 0.8 percent as people spend more on non-durable goods such as cosmetics and gasoline. 
but facility investment saw a decline of more than 5 percent compared to the previous month on the back of a slump in investment in the machinery and transport sectors. The official from the agency added that construction orders, which plunged more than 50 percent on year, the largest decline seen in more than 13 years, indicates industry outlook uncertainty despite January's robust performance, thus requiring further observation. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. And South Korea is still struggling with high food prices. Household disposable income in the country last year saw a smaller on-year rate of increase than that of the hiking food prices. Disposable income rose 1.8 percent compared to a 6 percent on-year increase in food prices. Data from Statistics Korea on Monday showed that disposable income reached 3.96 million won per month on average, or nearly 3,000 U.S. dollars. With high interest rates, this would work out as being 20 percent less than the average household monthly income. Both South Korean consumers and retailers have changed their strategies to live better in times of soaring inflation. An Songjin tells us how they've been dealing specifically with rising food prices. Consumers in South Korea are adopting a variety of strategies to ensure they spend wisely amid rising consumer prices. According to Statistics Korea, the increase in the price of groceries up to January remained in the 6 percent range for the fourth consecutive month compared to the year before. As more people look for ways to save on living costs, retail industries have also been catering to demand. Convenience stores such as this one are following large retail stores and starting to sell own brand products, hoping to appeal to price-conscious consumers. This convenience store saw its own brand products on top across multiple produce categories. For example, an own brand pack of eggs here is 45 percent cheaper than other brands and is the most bought as well. And some own brand products are as much as 60 percent cheaper than other brands. Since large supermarkets are no longer as cheap, I go to convenience stores that are nearby. If snacks or drinks have the same ingredients, I tend to buy own brand products since they are cheaper. Data from the Korea Chamber of Commerce noted that South Korea's own brand product industry saw an on-year rise of 11.8 percent from the fourth quarter of 2022 to the third quarter of 2023. One way consumers have started saving money is by buying own brand products, which are cheaper but also reliable as they come from well-known retail stores. Own brand products in advanced countries already make up a large portion of grocery items. Soaring grocery prices are mostly driven by surging fruit prices, which saw a drop in supply due to abnormal weather conditions. Fruit prices soared 26.9 percent in January, which is the biggest jump since January 2011. As a result, consumers are looking at other ways of getting fruit. According to Korea's Customs Service, frozen fruit imports hit a record high last year. This retail store saw an increase of 119 percent in 2023 compared to the year before. I usually buy frozen strawberries or blueberries because they last longer and I can use them in juices. I also buy apples that have scratches at a cheaper price. Though the government has been making plans to address soaring grocery prices, including reducing tariffs on imported fruit, consumers will continue to find ways to spend wisely while prices remain high. An Songjin, Arirang News. The South Korean government has designated overseas plant sales as one of its five major export projects for 2024, setting its target at 33 billion U.S. dollars for the year. This is more than 9 percent higher than last year's target of 30 billion dollars. South Korea's exports experienced a turning point towards surplus in September last year, with overseas plant orders reaching their highest in eight years, mainly due to the so-called New Middle East boom. The latest plan to expand overseas plant exports was recently announced after a public-private joint export expansion strategy meeting presided over by Trade Minister An Dokun. During the meeting, the government discussed a detailed blueprint to achieve this year's overall export goal of 700 billion U.S. dollars. The Mobile World Congress in Barcelona has wrapped up leaving the global audience with the question of how far artificial intelligence will take us. E&E answers how much South Korea will contribute with the rest of the world's tech giants on developing AI tech. 
The overarching theme during the four-day event was Future First, embodying six sub-themes such as 5G and AI, and extended beyond the mobile industry to digital transformation overall. This year's AI scene shaped up to be a little different from last year. Or, or applications around 5G AI and platforms, and how these three things can work together to provide a service or a solution to you as a consumer or to you as a businesses that is different from what it was before. South Korea's turnout for MWC 2024 was its largest yet, with many startups and SMEs participating. The Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency opened a joint booth with the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy for small domestic startups, SMEs and related organizations. Eight public institutions joined forces with the government to support Korean companies as one, so 118 startups and SMEs are promoting at MWC under the same brand, Korea. AI was a running theme for many Korean firms at the joint booth, and domestic startup Hyodol, offering AI companionship for the elderly, was awarded the 2024 Global Mobile Awards in the Best Mobile Innovation for Connected Health and Well-Being category. The country's biggest tech firms also brought their A-game, with Samsung Electronics unveiling its latest line of wearable tech, the Galaxy Ring, which tracks health data in your sleep. Telecommunications companies KT and SK Telecom set up AI-related booths and demonstrated a wide range of services. KT showed its intelligent urban air mobility traffic management system that assists in the safe operation of urban air mobility vehicles. UATM digitally replicates real-world UAM operations by integrating digital twin technology and AI that enhances safety based on numerous data analysis and simulations. As for SK Telecom, it showcased its telco-specific large language model that's used in various services such as its virtual chatbot assistant. And in true MWC spirit, South Korea was also one of 10 countries alongside the United States, Australia and Japan that signed a joint statement outlining principles for the research and development of sixth-generation wireless communication systems. Ian Hee, Arirang News. South Korea and the U.S. today kicked off their annual combined military exercise, Freedom Shield. The exercise is aimed at strengthening their combined readiness and defensive posture amid escalating North Korean threats. The training is based on scenarios that reflect a range of threats within the security environment, such as targeting cruise missiles. There are a total of 48 combined field training exercises on land, at sea, and in the air, double the number of the same period last year. The exercise will run for 11 days until March 14th. China's largest annual political event, the Two Sessions, has kicked off today amid a number of pressing issues, including economic worries. Plans to jumpstart the economy will be high up on the agenda. Yi Zhengjie has more. The National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference kicks off on Monday with the National People's Congress opening on Tuesday as China begins its largest political event of the year, known as the Two Sessions. This also means that its Congress will begin to gauge the direction of state affairs under President Xi Jinping, who has entered the second year of his third term in office. At the center of attention at this year's Two Sessions will be China's economy and its economic growth target for this year. Amid concerns over deflation and the slumping real estate market, global investment institutions are predicting China's economic growth rate this year to be at the 4% range. However, looking ahead, Beijing has boasted a strong resilience, great potential, and ample vitality, with many predicting that China will propose a growth target of 5%. There will also be focus on who Beijing will name as their next top diplomat. According to analysts, the current head of the Chinese Communist Party's International Liaison Department, Liu Jinchao, is being considered as the person to replace Wang Yi as foreign minister. Pundits say with the U.S. presidential election coming up in November and no telling who will be sitting in the Oval Office, 
China is playing it cautious, as Liu is considered to have a moderate view on the U.S. Attention will also be on what kind of message will be communicated on the Taiwan issue and whether this year's two sessions will allow for a tighter grip on power for President Xi. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. South Korean girl group TWICE and their latest album, With Youth, topped the Billboard 200 chart on Sunday, giving the group their first number one on the main U.S. album chart. The group's 13th mini-album sold 95,000 equivalent album units in the week ending February 29th, mainly from traditional album sales. TWICE joins seven other K-pop groups who have topped the Billboard 200 chart and becomes the third K-pop girl group to accomplish the feat. The Billboard main album chart ranks the most popular albums of the week in the U.S. based on album sales, track equivalent albums, and streaming equivalent albums measured in equ equivalent album units. Recent scientific data points to the positive effects of gardening. It turns out the more you garden, the less depressed or anxious you become. And that's because gardening helps increase blood flow to the brain, which is especially effective for enhancing cognitive functions for seniors. Ian Jin tells us more. The elderly people who come to this garden have mild dementia or cognitive impairment. They do a quick warm-up and begin gardening activities like weeding and pruning. There's also time to have lunch together next to the garden, where eating some of the vegetables they grew themselves adds to the flavor. We were all strangers, but it was nice to meet everyone here. These elderly people are able to leave their houses and have somewhere to go. After enjoying gardening activities for the day, 9 out of the 51 participants had the rate of blood flow to the brain measured. Before gardening, a lot of blue can be seen in the frontal lobe area. During the gardening activity, the same area turns yellow, while it turns red afterward. This shows an increase in blood flow of roughly 8.7 percent, which correlates with enhanced cognitive function. The simple activity of gardening not only helps participants increase physical activity, but adds joy to their lives to reduce depression, as well as boost their cognitive skills. The doctor prescribed medication because I had symptoms of depression, but now I don't take the medicine. Many of them ask if there are more opportunities and say it made them very happy. More detailed scientific data is being revealed to support the positive therapeutic effects that gardening brings to people beyond being just a hobby. Ian Jin, Arirang News. South Korean researchers have developed a catalyst that increases the efficiency of liberating hydrogen from plastic by more than 10 times without the need for additional electricity or heat input. Chong Eun-ju has the details. This is a solution where fragments of PET bottles are dissolved in a strong alkali. When exposed to light with a wavelength similar to that of the sun, gas bubbles are generated. These gas bubbles are hydrogen. After 40 hours, 98 percent of the plastic is decomposed and converted entirely into either carbon dioxide or hydrogen. The amount of hydrogen produced per 100 grams of plastic is approximately 58 liters. Even just one gram of the catalyst developed by South Korean researchers can generate 3.7 liters of hydrogen per hour. This performance is more than 10 times superior to previously reported ones. Catalysts that decompose a raw material of plastic have been developed. In this study, even stable molecules containing benzene rings can be completely decomposed. The significant increase in catalytic efficiency is due to the uniform distribution of platinum, the core material of the catalyst, on the supporting material. The supporting material, titanium dioxide, was exposed to sunlight to create many holes in the surface. When platinum was inserted into each hole and bonded, almost all platinum atoms participated in the catalytic reaction, maximizing reaction efficiency. With only sunlight and no additional energy, we can create uniform bonding sites on the commercially supported catalyst and allow metals to bond in the optimal state. The research team expects the cost of the catalyst to be low because only a small amount of platinum is needed, maximizing its efficiency. Chong Eun-ju, Arirang News. Let's take a look at the latest news in the world now. 
We're seeing a sharp rise in malnutrition in the Gaza Strip. According to the Gaza Health Ministry on Sunday, at least 15 children have died as a result of dehydration and malnutrition at a hospital in the northern Gaza Strip. The United Nations Children's Fund had warned last month of the serious threat posed to the health of children and pregnant women caused by the rise in malnutrition. UNICEF fears more children will die unless the war ends and barriers to humanitarian relief are immediately resolved. According to UNICEF's regional director for the Middle East and North Africa, inadequate access and multiple dangers hinder UN humanitarian operations, leading to a widespread deficiency in nutritious food, safe water and medical services. In the United States, severe blizzard conditions hit Northern California and Nevada over the weekend. The Sierra Nevada mountain range is still under blizzard warnings, and hundreds of miles of highways in California have been shut down. Ski resorts in the region have been closed, and over 15,000 people in both states have been left without power. Heavy snow forecast to reach up to 360 centimeters was made even worse by winds of up to 305 kilometers an hour. The Sierra Nevadas are expected to receive an additional 60 to 150 centimeters of snow at elevations of 1,200 meters or higher on Monday and Tuesday. Authorities are advising residents to stay safe and be cautious while traveling. In Haiti, the Western Hemisphere's poorest nation continues to be stricken by gang violence, which has been ongoing for more than two years. On Saturday, hundreds of inmates escaped the main prison in the capital Port-au-Prince after armed gangs stormed the facility, leaving at least five people dead. The total number of prisoners who fled the prison is still unknown. The attack comes as Haiti's prime minister visited Kenya to finalize an agreement which would see the African nation send 1,000 police officers to Haiti to assist in restoring order. France is preparing to become the first country in the world to put the right to abortion in its constitution. Parliamentarians from the upper and lower chambers will meet on Monday on a special Congress convened by French President Emmanuel Macron for a final vote on the abortion revision. If the proposition gains a three-fifths majority in the special Congress, France will become the world's first nation to constitutionalize the right to abortion. The text adopted by the Senate seeks to inscribe in Article 34 of the French Constitution that the law determines the conditions in which a woman has the guaranteed freedom to have recourse to an abortion. Che Ji-hee, Arirang News. Good afternoon. After a winter-like weekend, temperatures eased yesterday afternoon with a thick layer of ultra-fine dust. Most parts of Korea are still covered with dusty air, with an ultra-fine dust advisor issued in Gyeonggi-do and Chungcheong, Namdo province. A good quality face mask is a must today. Meanwhile, rain is in the forecast on Jeju from this afternoon, spreading to southern regions tonight. Then it will rain nationwide tomorrow. Further south will receive heavier showers, while mountains regions in Gangwon-do could see snow instead of rain. And tomorrow's precipitation will clear the dust in the air. So that means we'll be trapped in dusty air all day today under partly cloudy skies. After a sub-zero start in central regions, highs are going a couple of degrees higher than seasonal norms. So we're topping out at 11 degrees, Daejeon at 13 degrees Celsius this afternoon. Temperatures will stay slightly higher than norms this week, with more wet conditions in store midweek. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions.
That's all we have for you at this hour. We'll bring you more updates from Korea and around the world at the same time tomorrow.